Sup foods, how's it going and welcome to another tutorial Thursday, Pity. And today we're gonna talk about camera basics and everything you need to know when you get a camera like this in your hand and you don't know anything about it and you wanna know how to use it. Let's begin. If you're starting out with photography, all that can be very intimidating. You don't know what a shutter is or a focal length and all these things. And you just set the camera on auto and then you just snap, snap, snap. But um, this is not how photography is done. Because if you put everything on auto, you don't take the pictures, your camera is taking the pictures. And if a picture is going to turn out well, it's not thanks to you, it's thanks to the camera. So what you don't want is that your pictures are taken randomly. You want to be in control of all of your settings. That's why I'm making this video right now, so you have it easier when you have a camera like this in your hands. Inside the camera, there's three settings which are very important and all of them, and don't get confused here, all of them control the lighting. How bright is it? But in the end, it's not about how bright is it, it's about the depth of field, it's about the motion blur. That's what it is about. Let's start in the beginning. Usually the first number you see on your display is 1 50th or 100th or whatever the number is, this is the first number you see on your display. And what that means, that is the shutter speed. The bigger the number, so let's say 100 or 200 or 1000, the darker your image is gonna get, but also the less motion blur you're gonna have. Because this is the speed of your shutter, shutter speed. You know? So when your shutter is very slow, okay? So if the number is low so one half for example is slower than one hundredth so that means your shutter closes for half a second so it's like shh, this this speed or you can have the shutter for five seconds so it's, so your shutter is gonna shut like this one two three four five okay and then all of this motion you have during those five seconds it, it's gonna capture it all you know and you must understand everything you see on camera is nothing but light this here skin all that this is light light reflects against me towards the camera so it captures light this is what a camera does it captures light not people or anything so to have sharp images you don't want the shutter speed to be very long you want the shutter speed to be 150th or 100th depending on the location the photo you're taking for example you're taking a picture of a racing car passing you and if you had a shutter of 150th the car would be pretty blurry what you want in that case is you want to crank out the shutter speed of 1000 or something and then you snap it and it's sharp or the other way around. You know those pictures with long exposure, what they say, of the moon or uh, stars or the city lights. And you have like all those light streaks of, I don't know, a freeway or something. This is taken with long exposure, with a shutter speed of 30 seconds. Like I said, 30 seconds, the shutter closes and opens. So uh, during those 30 seconds, light is coming in so rule of thumb keep your shutter at 150th because 150th is more or less the motion blur we see with our human eyes and this is the most natural motion blur but in special occasions if you shoot water or fire or racing cars then you want to crank up the shutter speed so you see everything but then again let's say you shoot a racing car super fast shutter is on 1000 your image is gonna get darker. So you have to compensate with either real light or with the next step, the second number on your display is the f-stop. Right now, the f-stop is on 2.8 and the f-stop always depends on your lens. The lower the number and the more open you can open your iris, the iris in the camera. So the f-stop is the iris and opens and closes. The closer, the iris, the less light is coming in, but also the more depth of field you have. So if you want me in the foreground, super sharp, see how sharp I am in the background uh, out of focus. If you want both in focus, you have to bring the number down. So not F sub 2.8, maybe F sub 8.0 or something like that. Then you get a very 
sharp depth of field everything is sharp usually you don't want that it's very cinematic if only the foreground is, is in focus and the background is out of focus it usually looks cool that's why people spend so much money on lenses but always remember the closer the iris the higher the f-stop the less light is coming in so you again have to compensate it like if you close up the f-stop have a shallow depth of field then you have to bring more light in or have a, a slower shutter or a higher ISO which comes later so do you understand f-stop means the, the depth of field how sharp your foreground is how blurry the background is now we have a third number the ISO ISO usually every camera or many cameras have a native ISO and you usually don't want to go away from that this camera has an ISO of 640 and what is the ISO ISO is nothing but a digital exposure adjustment it increases the exposure or decreases the exposure but it's digitally it's not like it lets more light into the camera like the f-stop or the shutter speed it's digital it's all digital so it's not really real light it's like a digital amplifier if you will so the ISO is a great way to compensate the, the exposure you change with the shutter speed and with the f-stop so let's say you have a very fast shutter speed and a very shallow depth of field so the f-stop is also very low then it's a very dark image but then in the end you can increase the iso and brighten up the image again and the best tip i can give you just play around with those settings you know try to shoot different exposures like have it dark have it bright because every camera is always able to brighten up something but it's always a question what you want to use to brighten your image is it your shutter speed so let's sum it up real quick we have the shutter speed keep it at around 150th f-stop as low as the number as low as po possible 2.8 or so and that gives you like a very good depth of field background out of focus and the ISO is just to correct your exposure if your image is too bright make it uh, keep the ISO lower if your image is too dark crank the ISO up but eventually if you crank up the ISO too much it's gonna grain and you're gonna have a grainy image so be careful with that so that's it for this tutorial Thursday I know that was a little complicated if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and and what else like the video subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one. Later.